All right. Hello, everybody. Hello, Luca. Hello, Zarvangus. Hello, T. Welcome back to Rose Guns Days. Last time, Leo just put himself directly in the sights of Richard, who immediately saw that Leo was not too keen on becoming a bad guy. <laughs> and Keith is like, yeah, I bet I could take him. You know, he's not so tough. Oh my god, I can't wait for Keith to get his ass kicked by Leo. <laughs> Fucking hell, god. I would have never thought Keith would turn out like this. <laughs> and Leo and Jean and freaking Meryl and the remaining wandering dogs who Zell just learned that Oliver died and we still didn't see how she reacted yet. Ugh, waiting for that. Ugh. Looks like they're hatching a plan to uh, get uh, back to Prima get uh, find Rose and Wayne and mount a counterattack. Let's get back into it. The old Rose. Ever since you went away, Rose has been fighting all alone all the time. But, but if Rose has not been sitting as soon as go, he could bear the brunt of all troubles. Around her demanded that she bear the brunt, and she accepted that rule. During these two years, that girl has been hurt and worn out so much. Oh, God. She whipped herself out of people, but no one rewarded her, just abused her wherever they pleased, slandering her. Everyone. No, I'm sure I did it too. But we weren't evil. She accepted her great efforts. Because we're too goddamn poor. Do you know about Rose getting shot? I do. I hear that ever since then she's been kept in hiding somewhere. Spoken to Rose. Ever since you left, Rose has practically been in a different world. So no one treated her as a human like everyone else. People assume it's normal for her to work all the time. And as soon as it looks like they stand to lose something, they vilify her. I'm sure. She was shot. The last sort of drive in her heart was just snapped. We have no idea what's going on with Rose. We haven't seen her since, since she was shot. I'm sure. Rose blames herself for leaving Peter in a top spot until someone forgives her. I'm sure she'll keep on blaming herself somewhere, like she's probably doing now. Leo, looks like you gotta come in on a white horse. <laughs> I'd like to have Jean and Rose meet. Huh? She looks like the exact opposite of Rose, but for some reason they both feel similar. Maybe the only one who can really understand Rose. Maybe it isn't me or Richard. Maybe it's her. Of 
Tentacles will stand by your side. With Stacy, you're on coverage, that is. So, which one of you is going to show their courage and stir them up? Uh, I won't do it. If they thought I was a ringleader, I'd hate to think what would happen next. Huh, and what about you, Chairman? I can't. I can't. It's impossible. Vice Chairman? Director? We might be able to manage something together, but I couldn't stand at the head. Okay, got it. Of course you guys don't have the balls to show that kind of courage. Of all the impertinence. So, are you saying you're going to do it? Hell yeah, motherfucker! Well, yeah, basically. I'll do it! When those Primavera punks show up, I'll stand at the front and welcome them in! But! No desoiting under enemy fire! Got it? You'll all follow behind me and stand up against them together. Do you have the courage for that? I thought they might fall for silent. However, without a moment's hesitation, someone cheered. Everyone turned around, and there was the young man from the fish shop. Sure. If Jean Chan's gonna do it, then I'm man enough to do it too. I could not do it. Almost immediately after, another person appeared. I'll do it too. I've wanted to stew the guts of those punks for a while now. Doesn't it just grind it you'd have those mere boys stepping all over us? Yeah, uh, that's right. Uh, that's right. Let's show them how much guts merchants have. When the young people rose up, their passion engulfed the whole group. Then, if everyone else was standing up, this poison or that poison would stand up too. If we're all together, we can't afford not to do it. But if it turns into a fight, we old folks won't be of any use. What are you talking about? I'm still not losing to those young pups. You punks. Next time you show up, I'll go wild with my rolling pin. Ha! Whoa! That's our prison! Now that's what I call a man! I'm sure this is that thing that Rose was looking for. Yeah. I know. At this rate, if I don't go all out, I'll doubt I'll have the chance, any chance to shine. Oh no, you'll definitely have some chances to shine, Leo. Still, that's one hell of a speech. She'd make a good politician. True, it had been a fine, vigorous speech. But it was shocking that she had managed to give them so much courage so quickly. While he voiced his admiration, Claudia whispered something secretively into his ear. I gotta say, Jean, I am having an absolute blast voicing Jean. I want her to have more dialogue. <laughs> like, she is so... So much fun. While he voiced his admiration, Claudia whispered something secretly into his ear. What's that? Is that really true? <laughs> you know I got a one show. Bob, look at Saki. Whoa. Now there's a surprise. Jean, huh? She's gonna be big. about courage resides in all people yes i was one badass bitch however no one can draw out their courage alone regardless how small great or small their courage is it only appears when someone pushes them from behind and becoming the very first person to push is what makes someone qualified to become madam <laughs> that is why both madam rose and madam jean are Madams. Um, 
What was that about that bottle of sake? <laughs> well, as to that, truly, son, it was just a bit of this. Kuratsugu grinned and made a gesture. But Julie had no idea what he meant. It means she prepared beforehand. Prepared beforehand? Huh? Beforehand. Madame Jean went out to surround several young shopkeepers who seemed likely to sympathize with her and bribed them. <laughs> Telling them to sympathize with her speech. Sorry, Julie. Still, it's not fair if I don't reveal the trick. I did tell you, though. Uh, that courage only appears when someone pushes you from behind. Uh, uh, I see. So, you were saying it was staged. However, Julie, while it is true that the enthusiasm of the sympathizers was arranged for by me, the courage they roused after being pushed from behind was, without doubt, true courage. Madame Rose's heart was too pure. She is so she only tried appealing to their hearts. Madame Jean was just a bit better at it. Oh, you flatter me, young man. Ah. Still, don't get the wrong idea. I may have been more clever in my methods, but the truly noble and just one was Madame Rose. Every time. I had no words. I was stunned silent. So young Jean had finally appeared in the story. Madame Rose and Jean were starting to show their similarities. A tale spanning over two years is finally coming together. Damn it, I was this close to a... Oh, I thought it was a chapter break. Okay. <laughs> hey there, Jean Chan. Dude. Like, I've, like, invited a lot of friends over to play today. Like, totally. Uh, they're here. They're really here. Hey, President! Don't get scared! Show him the guts! Uh, ee. Letting out a miserable scream, the president ran away timidly and unsteadily, watching as the men guffawed. <laughs> That's no good. That president here is shocked. Does that thing really have balls? Like, totally. <laughs> oh, it doesn't have balls. Look how many people you brought just to fight me. <laughs> Y'all are the only one I want to play with today, dude. I like gotta think that John guy, like totally for sure. Sheesh. Looks like business is booming at the bakery. Seriously? Looks like they can't wait for that bite but not bread. <laughs> so you're both basically punching bags now, right? So, like totally. Still, like we are pretty hungry. I, like, may forgive you if you hand over some of that bread, but I'll have to empty out the whole store! Like, totally. <laughs> We've got no bread to waste on the likes of you! Huh? Like, bruh, you're killing my vibe. When he heard the voice of the president, who had supposedly run away pathetically, Tequila and the others turned around and gaped. Because standing there were shop owners and part-timers who'd come running from all the shops in Dawn Shopping District. They were all scared. They all wanted to hide behind someone else's shoulder. However, they had all gathered without a single one running away. The time for the showdown had come. The resolve from all of them get a, give a push to the courage of each one. We will never pay you guys again. You've mocked us too much. We've had enough. Get out of that Dawn Shopping District. 
You are customers. People who aren't customers can go the fuck home! Whoa, Claudia. Yeah, that's right! I've seen taking lessons from Madame Jean! Oh, motherfucker! That's what I'm talking about, Claudia! Ooh, what's with these guys? They've all got this weird killing intent. Hey, isn't this sort of bad? Justice is on our side! Turn tail and run, villains! We aren't the sort of weaklings you can bully and take money from anymore! Woo! Nicely said, President! That's cool! Now I see why the young female customers are always talking about you! <laughs> and the young housewives can't get enough of your dandy stuff. <laughs> well, looks like I can't hide my charm after all. <laughs> Dude, what are these guys doing all of a sudden? Like, totally. The boss? Oh, crap. There's even more than now. The people pushed from behind by courage gathered. They were, they were just customers who had come to visit the shopping district. However, they remembered Jean's speech from the other day. Even customers were members of the shopping district. If they didn't protect the shops, the shops would be destroyed. Protecting good shops, protecting the city. It's the duty of customers of ordinary city folk. Get out! Get out! Go back to Primavera, you bastards! What do you mean, protecting your countrymen? You're just taking people's money for trivial reasons. Yeah, yeah! You don't like it? Bring Madame Rose here! Crap! Maybe we should run! This is our answer! Break! The door shopping district ain't your plaything! If you've gotten the message, then run along home! D damn you! Getting so cocky! Like, totally! Oh, but if you're headed for the barber shop, go ahead. <laughs> if you hurry, I'll give you a nice uneven cut on that shaggy hair for free. <laughs> Are you mocking my hat again? Like, totally! Gah! Yeah, I totally, 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 for sure. Totally, totally, dad. <laughs> it's like we got a freaking Pokemon now. <laughs> they didn't even have to fight him. To kill him at backward screaming seemed to blow a fuse and topple over. Apparently, he'd gotten so agitated that he fainted. Henchmen picked up their boss, forced to retreat dejectedly without even a good parting job. From today on, just you try sneaking into this shopping district! Next time, we won't let you get away unscathed, motherfuckers! I hear the Dawn Shopping District is popular because of all the free services it offers. Now offering free massive blood loss, and I don't mean nosebleeds. Oh God! Damn it! Uh, remember this. I truly was a half-assed, pot and remarkable loser. When the men disappeared, the people let out a cheer. They clapped hands and celebrated. Okay, Claudia, you can cool down now. Fuck yeah! Oh, I mean... Yay! <laughs> we did it! We did it! Great. <laughs> it is, right? This is the Dawn Shopping District. I, uh... 
I want to protect the strength of the city forever. Chapter one, coming home and... Wow! I guess part four is going to be long. There was so much that we... Um, there was so much before this. There was like freaking five streams worth before this. Hello, Mystery Theater. Good morning. Welcome to the stream. My oh, jeez. That attack one year ago. I know it's a plot to make us fight each other and bring each other down. Still, I can't believe we haven't found any clues after a whole year. It is an embarrassment, and I must apologize. We still haven't found any evidence pointing to the culprit. Alan let out a deep sigh and hung his head. He'd have absolutely no intention of blaming them, but he apparently had been unable to hide his irritation. A year had passed since then. He had been sure that the great and mighty GDS would have figured out who the culprit was by now. During that year in China, he had kept waiting for the news that they had identified the culprit and avenged Mei Shui. However, the constant waiting had thrown his heart into turmoil. And at times, he had sealed that inside his inside his heart and sometimes acting as though he had forgotten about it all. Even though so many people shot at each other and so many died, the culprit is still unknown? Is that even possible? Meiji-san, I imagine you haven't just been playing around this last year, right? Of course not. This is my fucking sister we're talking about. So why do we still have no leads on Yuki-chan's killer? Is there any culprit that couldn't be exposed, even by the information gathering power of Chinatown? Young Lord. I don't mind. Alan Kuhn is one of our countrymen. Alan Kuhn? We still don't have any evidence. But lately, we obtained a truly interesting piece of information. A truly interesting piece of information? When you think about it, any other answer was unthinkable from the very beginning. There were so many highly trained and organized attackers. They used the most modern weapons, had an escape route prepared, and the ability to plan beforehand and gather information for the attack. That leads us to only one answer. You don't mean... This is information from a high Chinese military official at the GHQ. The second staff office, which is in charge of secret service organizations, has been keeping surveillance on a certain officer in City 23 occupying forces HQ. Yes, finally! Surveillance. Oh my god. Yes! They finally found him. And the target of their surveillance is Major Gabriel Cabaraya. He's the public order officer of City 23. He was assigned to that post last year. Hello, Burncastle. Welcome to the stream. But in actual fact, he was the head of a secret service organization and secretly tasked with countering organized crime. His job was probably to get close to Primavera and integrate them into a network of U.S. military spies. I don't really get it, but he's basically a big shot in some spy agency, right? A rough way of putting it, but yes. He was apparently given permission to use extra-legal measures to approach Primavera. And when we went back through Gabriel Cabaraya's history, we found he has a completely, totally good reason to hate us. 
They discovered that he lost his family when they were caught in an underworld feud. So he has a grudge against the underworld. That's probably a safe assumption. However, there was never a trace of it in his later record. Perhaps he was like you and Richard. So, he was waiting all this time for a chance to take revenge. Looks like we're gonna have our first attack on the boss soon. I wonder how, uh... I want, we might actually get to see how powerful he truly is. Most likely the object of his revenge is not the individuals who killed his family, but the criminal underworld as a whole. Surely he kept his vengefulness hidden for over 20 years, as he waited for a chance to gain a post that would allow him to take that revenge. Having two underworld powers fight each other would make his revenge more efficient. And not only that, but he could make the heads of both camps suffer the same pain as he did. The pain of losing family. Gabriel Cabarrera. There is no proof whatsoever, keep that in mind. But it does all add up. This is probably the truth. Though, because there was no physical evidence, it took a whole year before we could be certain. We know a thing or two about our opponent. We have to be cautious. I want you to understand that. Yuki's true killer. The one he'd hated beyond measure. Oh. That's just narration. The one he'd hated beyond measure. Keith was one, the one who shot her. But this was the person who had practically pushed Keith into doing it. And he killed Stella. He had Stella killed. Yuki's true killer. Even though his identity had been revealed, there was no further anger in Alan's heart, nor was there a sense of accomplishment. There was just a strange resignation, as though he was accepting Yuki's death again. Yuki inside his heart smiled, nodded, and whispered to him. Good! Good! That's enough. Don't you think it'd be stupid if the chain of revenge brought on endless wars? <laughs> Rather than talk about killing people, let's talk about saving people and joining hands. You're right, Yuki-chan. Her hand was definitely resting on Alan's shoulder. Alan Kuhn. Aniki. There's no anger in my heart. I won't let the blood rush to my head and run off to raid the occupying forces HQ. Even if I did something that stupid, I'd just be riddled with holes. You could try to lose patience with me in the next world. If there's a way I can have revenge, it's to make sure things never go his way again. We will avert a feud between the GDS and Primavera. We'll succeed in that and expose this guy. That'll be Yuki and my revenge. A good revenge. I, Lee Meiju, will gladly participate in it. And I will sincerely support that revenge and assist you. All right. We can only avoid a feud by proving the GDS was framed. And then Richard will definitely have egg on his face for sure. But there's still no evidence that would let us do that. Hey, Shalon, I, I keep forgetting you're there. <laughs> you were such a fixture of the previous arc. I know. We should probably tell him too. What is it? There is no evidence, but there is a person who could probably provide testimony that would clear us. Who's that? 
the former man in charge of maintaining local public order, Captain Philip Butler. Oh no! Is Alan gonna meet Butler? Oh fuck! God damn it! What am I gonna do? With the appointment, appointment of Major Kavariah. Captain Butler had been effectively kicked out of his position. Captain Butler was a man with plenty of dark secrets. The Major probably had some dirt on him. By now, he wasn't being treated like a cat with a bell on its neck, but rather a chicken in a cage. Shellon discovered that the captain was probably under house arrest, practically under house arrest, on the fourth floor of the Occupying Forces HQ's Western Building. That floor was off limits to everyone not involved with the anti organized crime team. They knew that he was under observation 24 hours a day, treated like little more than a prisoner of war. Captain Brut Butler probably knows too much about the truth of the crime. Probably. According to Shaolan's investigations, the captain has given up resisting, but he doesn't seem to be obedient. I am sure he would give evidence against Gabriel Kaborai's conspiracy. Looks like we have to break him out. I've heard the captain and the consigliere go way back. They should trust each other. Exactly. If Captain Butler gives evidence about the conspiracy, our names will be cleared. Sounds easy. Something tells me it's not going to be this simple. All we need to do to clear your names is get the captain and the consigliere together and start them talking. Alan Kuhn, if it were that simple, we wouldn't be in such a fix. Don't be mad, Shaolan. But Alan Kuhn's way is the only one. While Butler has been held in the Occupying Forces HQ building, he's had a few chances to go outside. And practically none recently. However, if we wait prudently for an opportunity... I don't think we've got t time to be that relaxed. Why do you think that? You vaguely picked up on it yourself, haven't you? Or maybe you don't understand, particularly because you're a man who can stay calm and look at the big picture, even after losing a sister. Please, uh, please don't take this the wrong way. You should understand what I'm trying to say. If the one-year anniversary of Meishui's death is drawing near, then so is the one-year anniversary of Stella's death. Yeah. Even I feel my chest getting torn apart as that time approaches. I can't imagine how the consigliere feels after losing both Stella san and Yuji kun. Oh. I had to deal with that unbearable feeling for two people instead of one. It's likely that Primavera will move very soon. So they're really on a tight schedule. They knew that the incident where Meishue was shot was a put up job by Primavera. I gotta say, this arc, ever since like the, uh, the freaking, uh, the, the second attack has been in insane, nonstop. By far the best shit in Rose Gun days ever. Like approaching like the wholesomeness of the freaking uh wandering dogs. Like, obviously this isn't like that, but I'm saying 
I I'm loving this just as much, if not more, than that part. Seriously, this is like peak Rose Gun stays right here. This whole arc has been nonstop amazing. Young Jean is a fantastic character. Like, I am just, I don't know about y'all, but I'm, I've been really loving this ever since uh, that second big battle, like Richard turning evil and that, like, God. They knew that the incident where Mayshui was shot was a put-up job by Primavera. That incident had occurred the day before Stella and Yuji's public funeral. For the Japanese as well, the one-year anniversary of the death is important, an important event in memory of the dead. It would hardly be strange if Richard's vengefulness had been amplified to the point of bursting. If making Captain Butler testify is the only way to clear your name, then we don't have time to prudently wait for an opportunity. I feel the same. But what would we do? There's only one thing we can do. Time for a jailbreak? On the fourth floor of the Western Building at the Occupying Forces HQ. The Prince will save the Princess trapped in the tower. Yep! <laughs> you have courage, but how would you do it? I know that the GDS can't get involved. You can't risk sparking trouble with the US military if something goes wrong. But I'm not technically part of the GDS. I may be like family, but I don't wear the crest of the dragon. He does have, like, some kind of crest here, though. What is this? Like... I can't help but feel like he's like some kind of unused beta design for Battler. Like, based on this, like, he has like a Ushimiya crest-ish thing here for no fucking reason. He's literally like a photo negative of Battler or something. He's gotta be something like an unused prototype of Battler. He just has to be. If I'm alone, then even if... If I do happen to screw up, I just have to bite my tongue off. Ouch. Alan Kuhn. Meiji-san. No, Aniki. I didn't come back to City 23 to play. Very soon, something will happen that Yuki-chan would never have wanted. It'll probably be something that can never be undone. A lot of people from both countries will probably get dragged in. If that happens, I won't be able to face Yuki-chan in the next world. Do you stand a chance of success? Well, of course. I'll raise those, chance those chances as high as I can before it start. But there's no time. Let's move right away. Right away? When exactly will you do it? No, right? What? No recon or anything? Like... Chapter 2, Mission Butler's Rescue! Woo! Yeah, Colonel! Welcome to Primavera! Ho 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 ho! I see your boobs haven't changed at all. Oh? Hey, Colonel, you smell like the perfume of a woman I don't know. Colonel, that's so mean! And you said you wouldn't hide anything from Mira, even though I'm Mira. You misunderstand, you misunderstand. I would not hide anything from you, Mira, sir. Really? Then tell me some funny secret stories from work again. <laughs> tell us, tell us. Your secret stories are always so interesting. I just love them. <laughs> well, if you're asking for interesting secret stories today, Time to gather the information. As the first place that comes to mind is the location to add Rose. He's a guest house for high U.S. military officials. 
in the caliber of which I was not here for. She supposedly hid there when Captain Butler was keeping her safe. That guest house is practically a U.S. military base. Even a dog couldn't sneak in without a pass. Are we going to have like two jailbreaks at once? That's awesome. From what I've investigated, that looks like a no-go. What do you mean? I tried asking some of the girls patronized by U.S. military people who visit Primavera. But I couldn't pick up a hint of anything like that. It was a guest house for U.S. military high officials in City 23, which was used once used to hide Rose. It was equipped well enough to hide nobles, but completely isolated from the outside world. It was under constant guard by a team of USMPs, and no safer hiding place existed in City 23. Primavera had a close relationship with the occupying forces, so it seemed likely that such a place might have been offered, but I don't think they, they, uh, I didn't, wasn't Rose hidden way out in the country, though, I thought. From what Nina has been able to investigate, there is no trace of that. If me and Rose had been hiding there for a whole year, there would have been some sort of rumor. I haven't heard anything like that. Wouldn't they be keeping that top secret? Oh, that's impossible, too. He even got info on secret meetings between the Director General and the woman he's been cheating with. Can't imagine Madame Rose being a VIP guest for a year and then never even being a freaking rumor about it. So. It isn't the U.S. military guest house. In the harbor districts, there's a lot of hideouts no one used to use there during the Caleb era. We've been eliminating them one by one, but found no clues. I can't imagine they'd stop someone like Madame Rose in a dark place like that for a whole year. Yes. And considering she was able to exchange letters, She's probably somewhere with a bit more access to culture. It wasn't a dirty hideout used by some villain. Which means it can't be anywhere in C-23. I agree. She's probably being held in a hotel or something similar, but it isn't one in C-23. If it was a City 23 hotel, the information network of ladies of the evening would have spotted it sooner or later. The only ones who knows where she is are the Consigliere, the Grand Boss, and Aniki Wayne. Vainson, that's been my Madame Rose's side this whole time. Yes? That's what we've heard. If Vainson had been tamed by the Consigliere, just like Madame Mero says, and I don't think it's possible for Vincent to be confining and observing Madame Rose all by himself. Yeah. They need several guards there. And not just for a day or two. It's been a whole freaking year. So he must have a pretty large number of people. Where are all those people coming from? If only the Consigliere and Grand Boss knew about this. And they can't be coming from Primavera. And they ain't from the US military, neither. Could it be a family from another city? Even if the GGS and Bashan Bang are out, it's possible they might be offered a hideout by someone they're on friendly terms with. Like the Atomi, Satomi Alliance in Chiba. As to that, Madame Merrill's already contacted a man that's not in Sheba to check. The answer is no. Fucking hell. Satomi so Alliance knows nothing about Madame Rose's whereabouts. If we're looking for other possible groups that might have friendly relations with Primavera, there's the Castiglione family and the Orlando brothers. 
If the Consigliere's rallying cry is to expel all foreigners, it's unlikely he'd lead a Madame Rose in a foreigner's hands. Yeah. I don't think that's likely either. Are there any Japanese organizations besides the Satomi Alliance that Primavera might rely on? Japanese organizations in the countryside. Besides the Satomi Alliance? I've never heard of any. But it's just possible. That's just possible. It might be someone without a connection to Primavera. Or with a personal connection to the Consigliere or Grand Boss. Can we investigate that? <laughs> I can now. Charles the Rogue has leveled up considerably since we last met, Zell. So. On the VIP floor of the floor of the casino, stout gentlemen smoked expensive cigars as they played cards and roulette. Because of the era, there were quite a they were there were quite a few of quite of it should be quite a few people who'd managed to make easy money. However, they weren't fools, so they didn't run wild when the poor laborers, where the poor laborers could see them. Because of that, they want... Uh, my god, there's a lot of typos in this part here. They, they wanted to brighten their cloudy days as much as they pleased in a place where only rich people could enter. <laughs> here it is, here it is, here it is. You can thank my excellent luck for throwing an ace right then. Yeah, that's incredible, Chairman. Yes! <laughs> Chairman. Who would you like to bet? I'm in top form today. I can totally make it with this card. I'm all in. Sorry about that. She was doing yeah a lot, so. Overly excited after winning one time after another. The man pushes mountains of ships forward. The card was an ace of spades. He stood a very good chance of winning. This music reminds me of Danganronpa. Oh wow, Charles looks so mature here. Doesn't this music remind people of uh, Danganronpa? It certainly does for me. V3 especially here. In front of this man who was praying for the next card to have a good number for him, the dealer Charles smoothly laid down a card. By now, now Charles had further advanced his genius level dexterity. Oh, we maxed out his dex. That's very smart for a rogue. Allowing it to manipulate cards at will. A, dealer, a dealer's job is more than just handing out cards. A dealer is an entertainer. Gives the customers a marvelous balance of victory and losses, creating a stimulating span of time where they can forget reality. In order to do that, a dealer must be able to control the customer's game itself at will. To say nothing of the cards themselves. Come on, come on, come on, come on! A face card! Come on! <laughs> Your fortune's looking quite impressive today, Chairman. Oh, you can tell that sort of thing? Oh, can you, can you tell? When you're in front of a customer overflowing with good fortune, you can see them dance. Huh? Dance? You can see 
The cards dance. <laughs> Charles' smoothly flowing fingers placed a card in front of the customer. That simple act was done with a beautifully graceful action, as if the viewer was witnessing fine art. I can tell before you flip it. Oh, I can tell before you flip it. This card will symbolize your fortune tonight. Oh, oh, oh. okay. I'm gonna turn it over now. Here we go. <laughs> Incredible! I can't see. Oh, uh, did you see that? Tonight I'm the king of the spades. <laughs> Congratulations! A big victory for Chairman Yoshida! Charles pushed a massive pile of chips back to the customer who couldn't stop laughing. As if spring had come in his life. Okay then, a toast! James Coon, mind if I borrow him for a moment? He's the one who brought me victory! I'd like to buy him a drink. You're honorous with your words. Charles Coon, go with him. <laughs> yes, boss. Okay, over here, over here. I'll have to have another drink. <laughs> oh, and with that, cheers. Cheers. Oh, me? I've known Richard Coon for a long, long time. I brought quite a lot of his money. He charged a ton of interest, so he must have made a mint off me. But Chairman, I imagine you've raked in far more than that using th those funds. Chairman, that's incredible! <laughs> Man, do I feel excitement tonight? The Consigliere used to be a moneylender. Oh, the consigliere used to be a moneylender, right? He made it big over and over again as the owner of a small business. And now he's consigliere of Primavera. I'm sort of interested in the old days when he was still struggling. Right now, Rich is a huge boss in the criminal underworld. But believe it or not, he ran into a ton of trouble in the old days. I've known him for a long time, after all. I know everything about Richard Goon's past, including people he would trust the most. <laughs> She's a walker. Apparently an old business partner of the Consigliere instead of Shav and Shizuoka. And right now, with the big fish in Sijuoka criminal organization. No, that smells. Is this information is huge. Could you investigate any further? Of course. An honored customer coming this Saturday knows a lot about it. He's pretty fond of me. I'm sure he'll tell me. Oh, so I guess boy dealers do more than deal out cards. Of course. Entertaining the guests is part of my job. <laughs> oh my, what have you done, Charlesy? <laughs> huh? Huh? Uh, huh? Uh, you mean? Why are you guys looking at me all creepy? No, I didn't mean anything like that. It's over there. Oh god, oh god. Oh no! Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. Oh no. And Zell came back. Oliver. Oh 
Oliver. I'm sorry I'm late. I'm back now. There wasn't a single bullet left in Oliver's gun. <gasps> he fought bravely until the very last moment. I'm sure he wanted Wayne's son. And maybe Zal. To see him doing good. The procession Oliver was guarding was completely wiped out. Right? Yeah. They got massacred. Oh god, what Zell finds out that this was all like a freaking fi a screw job? Like, oh my god. She is gonna go fucking ballistic. But fortunately, the consigliere they got was a body double. If that had been the real consigliere, it probably would have been worse than death for Oliver. Oh no, God, they don't even know! I guess that's the only bright spot in the end. Oh God. Oh God. Fuck you! Fuck you! Fuck you! They had to cut right back to him. Son of a bitch! Fuck you! Huh. Those brats are such a pain. Oh god. Oh god. Seriously, can they just murder him? Seriously. We need the wandering dogs to fucking murder Okanogi here. Oh god. Well, dang. Curiosity kills the cat. Fuck you. Fuck all you. Huh. It's the grand boss and race, son. That's wrong. Scheming something again? Fool. We're talking about protecting Brune Vera. We're just talking about what to do about some scheming brats. <laughs> Huh? Fucking hell! No! Some survivors of Wayne's gang of brats seem to have sniffed out Madame Rose's location. Wayne's brats have good nose. Can't let our guards down. Even an old and collapsing embankment. Aren't you worrying too much? There's no way kids could find Madame Rose. <laughs> Do you know about the wandering dogs? Don't remember even hearing a dumb name like that. Oh, bitch. My god, Keith is doing everything in his power to become like, to, to, what's the opposite of endear himself? To, to make himself be hated by the reader. Oh my god. He is the biggest bitch. Seriously. God. They're a special team Wayne built once out of brats with particularly keen noses. You weren't around at the time, so you probably don't know, but they got quite a few big accomplishments to their name. They were so cute and awesome. Shame we'll have to kill them. In the end, the consigliere even let them attend the pasta gathering. In other words, even people like that were acknowledged by Richard. <laughs> Keith's eyebrows twisted visibly unha unhappily. I heard that in the I heard that in the end. 
Theron made Madame Rose's unofficial personal guard. That's the consigliere's recommendation. Well, there was some trouble during the Soasauce War. They went back to square one after that. Maybe they were the ones strengthening Richard back then, not you. <laughs> Maurice poked fun at Keith, knowing that he wanted Richard to hold him in higher regard than anyone else. Oh god, Keith is fucking so messed up now. I never imagined that Keith would be like a freaking boss. Seriously. Fuck you, you son of a bitch. Sort of feels like unpleasant people are popping up all over the place lately. Yeah, I doubt we're getting all chummy with Leo either. Leo is our advisor. I won't let y'all look down on him. God, I am the only one with half a moral left. Shh. But he's definitely going to get in Richard Son's way. Keith! Let him talk. God, when did I come the god dang voice of reason here? Are we the baddies? Yes. Yes. Oh, god dang it. Before he gets in Richard Son's way, I'm going to end Leo Shishigami. I'd like to see you try, motherfucker. At that instant, a heavy object nearly grazed Keith's eye and plunged into the wall. What the fuck? Whoa, that was dangerous. I see your arms as terrifying as ever. A suited arm was sticking in from the darkness of the hallway. It was Alfred's arm, which had thrown the knife with a keenness sharper than its blade. Oh, Leo was my prey. God damn it! Alfred has become their fucking minion. Unbelievable. If you're planning to snipe Leo, and I'll snipe you first. Oh my god, he's become one of these type of villains. Yes. Huh? What's going on? I don't get it. Clearly, you've never watched an anime before. If those wandering dogs are gonna make a mess, but my friend Richard. And I will clean them up. Wandering dogs? Take down Alfred and then fuck up Okanogi. Oh, okay. Great. Rats like them aren't worth my time. Seriously? So Alfred is gonna go after the wandering dogs. And Keith is going to go after Leo. <laughs> oh, I've got no interest in teasing with brats either. Shh. Why does everyone around here piss me off so much? Don't poke fun at him. A friend of my friend is my friend. I was just playing a little. I do remember that, Burncastle. I got a little listen to you talking. When I heard my friend was in trouble, I just couldn't ignore it. I feel bad for them. Like hell you do. But we better make our move before this starts getting messy. If we're gonna erase them, we gotta do our wings away. Do we really have to erase them? Yeah, Cyrus is the, the la only one with moral fiber left. And I bet Cyrus is going to die early because he's the only one questioning everything going on. <sighs> he's like their moral compass, but he's not doing anything. They've completely become a team of villains now. You said it yourself. An ant hole can collapse an embankment. Seriously, Burncastle, yeah, Alfred is not as strong as Keith. Oh, okay then. I shall execute them. 
Can the wandering dogs defeat Alfred for good? We'll see. I hope they can. Are you sure? We'll leave it to y'all. Now this is impressive. We'll get to see the killer crazy Alfred at work again. Yeah, I get it. Alfred, take care before trouble starts, okay? Fucking hell. God damn it! Wandering dogs, I know you can defeat Alfred. Yes, Grand Boss. I was getting bored anyway. I am a hitman. Hating shops and getting their money isn't my real job. Do it quietly. Don't make too much of a scene. <laughs> I'll get the children sniffing around. Madame Rose, a bye bye present for me. Oh, gentlemen. Were you having some sort of evil meeting? Oh, my friend. Look at the company Richard is keeping. God. They've really turned into a full gang of bosses to defeat. Cyrus reminds me of, like, um, the guy in Metal Gear Solid who gets in the tank. You first fight in the tank. And then you fight like it's the next to last guy walking around with a freaking machine gun. That's what I feel like Cyrus's role is going to be in all this. Oh, we were just chatting. Don't worry about it. No, do 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 do. Why are you dragging a punk like that around? He's like a low-level boss. Oh, <laughs> yeah, there, Marie Son. Like totally. Shut up. I don't like this guy. Collecting money. Those who laugh for a dollar will cry for a dollar. Every bit of money counts. Richard Son, thank you very much. Like, totally for sure. Without, uh, without, I doubt they'd be able to hold out a moment longer. If they overwhelm you with numbers, you must attack from a different dimension. Richard Son, thank you, like, totally. Stella is pleading with me. She wants their blood spilt on her grave. Oh, fuck you, Richard. Fuck you, Vulcan Raven. That's what I was thinking of, Zarmagus. Thank you. The time for revenge is near. We cannot have too much money. <laughs> that jean bitch you better watch out. Like, totally. That happy friends game of yours will get wiped out by a single slip of paper from Richard's son. Like, totally! Tequila held up the envelope of documents Richard had given him. That was their trump card against the Dawn Shopping District. Oh my god. This arc is fucking awesome. Seriously, I am loving this arc and what it's setting up for. No, Rose does not want the wandering dogs dead. It's freaking all the evil people on Primavera now. Richard has just gone full psycho. Oh god, hold on, you guys. I just have uh, I just gotta take a quick bathroom break. I will be right back. Seriously, the setup for this arc is fucking phenomenal. I am loving this, like setting up all these confrontations with all the different bosses. Awesome, love it, love it, love it, love it. I'll be right back.
can't read all those tiny motherfucking letters? Oh, you see, like, these are the contracts for your loans. Like, totally. Why would a punk have something like that? And, like, not just for your bakery. These are, like, the loan contracts for all of you in the Dawn Shopping District. Like, totally. Ha 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 ha. This could be trouble. Why does someone like this have those? Hey, don't think we just walk around stupidly leveling false charge all the time. Like, totally. We only do that on, like, Tuesdays. Our consigliere is, like, super clever, and you're, like, no match for him. <laughs> Like totally, like totally. <laughs> hey, uh, that's. But why? Businessmen started mu muttering to each other. <laughs> Apparently, that thing tequila held was more than a joke. Yeah, the, so far, Primavera doesn't know that Leo is here. They think he, they he, they still know him as. John, like, here. So, we can't resolve this just by beating the crap out of those punks. I hate to say it, but that's how it is. President, did you borrow money from these punks? Oh, the one we borrowed money from was much more merciful. Everyone in the Thorn Shopping District is significant loans with a soy and elderly landowner. They aren't loans. They're a huge debt of gratitude we owe. Without old Amakawa's compassion, which is deeper than the ocean, we wouldn't have been able to start our shops up again, much less form the Dawn Shopping District. Who's this old Amakawa? I'm guessing Jean's grandmother or grandfather. He's a really huge landowner. Who manned the area around the Edo River? There used to be a pompous geezer called Amakawa Shouten. Hey, Jean! That's no way to speak of old Amakawa. Without that man's generous heart, this stone shopping district wouldn't have even existed. Tokyo's old down down district covers Koto City, Sumida City, and Arakawa City. At that time, City 23, Old Edogawa District, was a corner of the Tokyo metropolis, but it wasn't thought of that way in Old Edo times. It used to be the nearest rural area to Edo, where farmers and fishermen eked out a living, and where enough natural scenery remained that the Shogun would visit to pra practice falconry. The Yamakawa family was a big landowner that possessed this vast area around the Ar Edo River. At the time, they had even been known as Lord Edogawa. They had tried to make the land prosper with commerce, beyond his farming and fishing, and had been generous in their support. Then came the war and the great disaster. All of the businessmen had suffered de devastating blows, and while they hung their heads without even the funds to rebuild, old Amakawa had reached out a hand of salvation to them. Old Amakawa was gravely ill due to injuries suffered in the Great Disaster. He gathered us around his sickbed and told us this. I'll lend you as much money as you need, so I want you to re revitalize this city no matter what happens. After saying that, and before he could see the city revival, he passed away. Oh, oh. I see. So we lent you money for free. However, while small sums and money aren't a problem, the borrowing and lending of large sums need to satisfy the requirements of the law. So they had drawn up contracts in the form of loans to make it all official. And sure enough, those contracts outlined the loan repayment deadlines and methods, detailing the interest and penalties to be applied for lack of payment. God damn it. Oh. 
However, it was basically a gift, though, that he just... Son of a bitch, Richard. God. So old Amako had only drawn up the contract as a formality. He left the world after saying he would extend all repayment and lights indefinitely, allowing them to pay them back whenever they became prosperous again. Fucking hell, Richard. Those people went on to revive their businesses as the Dawn Shopping District. The name Dawn comes from the first character in Old Amakawa's real name, Shoten. It was Dawn said that they would never forget the favor they owed to that man. In other words, that Amakawa geezer only let you guys have a few freebies when it came to paying off. Like, totally. That doesn't change the fact you burned money and have to return it. Like, totally. Now that old Amakawa has passed away, what happened to that bonded debt? There's a distant relative of the Amakawa family in Elmoria somewhere, fucking. That poison should have inherited that bond of debt. That Amakawa son in Elmoria is truly a wonderful person. They inherited old Amakawa's spirit and said they'd extend the repayment indefinitely. So why does this man have a bond of debt in his hands? <laughs> Aku Toku. His name's Evil. I went to Almoria and brought up all the loans. Ah! You are Aku Toku! Yeah, the name means like evil something. Well, his face definitely suits his name. He's got vice written all over it. This man is a disgrace to the John Stewart Shopping District! He acted like a representative and tried to steal that geezer's Amakawa's money by force! I was just trying to invest your money and make it grow. And now you call me a swindler? Shut up, swindler! Even you received so much from old Amakawa when he was alive. Oh, I do owe oh, old Amakawa. And I got nothing but grudges for you people. All this time, I've been waiting for a chance to get back at you. Ha <laughs> like totally. And there you have it, like totally. Mr. Akadoku went all the way to Amori, piled a whole bunch of money and butted the loans, like totally. Akutoku pretended to represent all the Don Shopping District and made contact with the Amakawa family in Aomori. We can't rely on old Amakawa's charity forever. Our shopping district has gathered up money, so we'd like to buy off these loads. Ha <laughs> ha, suckers! The Amakawas and Aomori were overjoyed, since this was a chance to make a lot of money off loans that normally wouldn't earn them anything. And when a representative of the Don's shopping district told them they had already recovered, the Amakawas had no reason to refuse. Of course, Primavera had prepared all the money. Tequila had encouraged Akutoku, Akutoku, Akutoku to trot out the plan and Richard approved it. In this way, Akutoku and Tequila successfully gained something vital to the John Stopping District. I've never forgotten my grudge against you all for calling me a swindler. Are you saying you did it to get back at us? My god, you're such a bitch. Gah, what a coward. You used to be such a good poison. Where did you go so wrong? Shut up! You saw starting when you got jealous that I was raking it in. <laughs> and when I propose that we all make money by sharing these profits, you call me a swindler! I'm so sad. No <laughs> woe is me. So anyway, anyway, our enemy is that slip of paper, is it? Is Leo gonna like snatch it out? He is super petty, definitely. That's right. 
Even your punch can't defeat these loons. Like, <laughs> totally. <laughs> so, what are you telling us to do? Ever since you all borrowed from Odamakawa, you haven't paid back a cent. So in accordance with the loan, I'm going to take your shafts. Hand over your shafts right now! Oh, that's so heartless. Hold on, my god, was crying. Aren't you ashamed of yourself? Shut up! Then why don't you bring that crying old Amakawa here? I'll cry and bow too. Seriously? What the frickin' hell? Hey, Mr. Vice. You're free to chase us away. How do you plan to make money off an empty shopping district? <laughs> oh, like totally. And now, Primavera has a merciful offer for you. If they couldn't pay off their unpaid loans right away, and according to the contract, they would have to hand over their shops. However, if they regularly paid support money to Primavera's Countryman Mutual Assistance Project, Kamap, their repayment on the loan would continue to be postponed indefinitely. What a piece of shit. To think that scum could sink so fucking low! Even if we have money to pay back to that geezer on Makoa, why the hell would we pay Primavera? Hey, Jean, be quiet. Have we pardon us? If we pay you support money, you will let us keep our shops, yes? Like, totally. Even I get tired of having to beat you up all the time. What do you say about settling all this now? Like, totally. We'll give you time to think. Will you fold up shawls or pray Primavera? Will you bow down and apologize for calling me a swindler? Or will you bring me a crying old Amakawa? Choose whichever you like, like, totally. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> like Hitchin. Looking pretty pathetic there, huh? Oh, like totally. You just gathered the blockheads together and started acting like a leader. And now you're suddenly stuck. Like totally. Shut up! I don't know if we're really stuck or not yet. Your consigliere says you need three things to be a leader. Ha <laughs> I'll tell you specifically right now, like totally. Influence, wealth, and force, right? Bingo! Like totally. Jane, you're just a bird timer with no influence at all. And you're a pauper without any wealth. You're enough of a shrewd up bit of a force, but that's it. You're not at all qualified to be a leader. There's no way you'll become a Joan of Arc at the Dodge Shopping Desert or like totally! Ah! God damn. Oh, things are not going well for either of our groups. Are we gonna go back to the wandering dogs now or are we still with Jean? Oh, still with Jean and, and Leo. Oh, how horrible. Oh, just when we finally got in the shopping district back on track. Here's the money for your unpaid debts. Beyond what you could possibly handle. Yeah, it is. Even if we did pay up, we wouldn't have enough money to maintain our shops. It'd be much cheaper to keep paying the support fees Jakita proposed. Still, I can't bear to bow my head to that Akutoku person. How could he spit in the face of old Amakawa like this? Yeah, that's right. We got three groups with Alan and the GGS. Yeah. He's saying you'll have to bow to him or hand over the shop, right? <laughs> sure, I'll go bow my head now. I finally got my bakery back on track. I can't hand it over now. These shops are practically the only assets we have. If we give them up, we'll have nothing left. We can't hand over our shops. It's really been through. Hmm. 
Indeed. We should count ourselves fortunate that we didn't have to, to pay up what we owed before now. <sighs> like you look when you put it that way. Perhaps take some fault money or something that. Something that. Can't be helped. There's no way around it. This is the one thing we can't. Uh. No, we can't do that, people. We may have had a contract when it came to those loans, but there ain't no limit to their threats. If we fold now, they'll keep asking for money without end. I agree. Even if you accept their deal, there's no guarantee they won't threaten you again. Hey, shut up, you two. What option is there other than paying up and bowing? If you do what they say, you might all be right for a while. It might be all right for a while. But they'll definitely come again. Demanded support money or approval money or whatever they want to call it. Jeez. I know that. But they won't let us go under either. I I don't know why I lost count. It's because the, um, for whatever reason, it wasn't showing up... Um, it wasn't showing up above uh, the thing for some reason. Yeah, I don't know. It wasn't because it wasn't brought to the front. I don't know why it was like that for this. Uh, See, so yeah, it should be like 97 or 98 or something like that. I know that, but they won't let us go under either. After all, with the chicken slaying golden eggs, they don't have to get anything by killing us. And how did that work out during the Caleb era? What did they do to that fucking chicken? If the going gets tough, they'll squeeze you down in the last drop, like Folgers. Prima Fair needs as much money as it can get for the feud with the GDS. Even if you do pay up, that won't bring peace. Instead, they'll use your money to buy guns and make a mess all across the city. Everyone! Paying them money ain't our only solution. And we mustn't give in to them so easily. We have to refuse them together. If you're trying to jump forward first and save service your own shop, we'll lose our solidarity again. We gotta stick together and reject their threats. Uh, shut up, stupid Jean. Oh! What are you deciding for? Are you a company president? Are you a manager? You're just a mere sales girl. It doesn't matter to you whether the shop goes under or something happens in our shopping district. But our few fortunes and lifestyles are on the line. You aren't even part of this. President! Oh, oh let go! You're an outsider. We don't need your opinion. First off, you aren't our representative or leader. Since when did you represent us? With his arms made strong by years of bread making, the president lifted Jean by the back of the collar, pushed open the sliding door leading out, and threw her out. Oh! President! Come on, out with you! You're an outsider. Come on, you are the bodyguard. Get out. Sure thing. The sliding door was closed. Jean, who had landed on her butt, rose to her feet while wiping off the dirt. She hung her head dispiritedly in a way that wasn't at all like her. You okay? So, I ain't even a part of this, huh? 
God, they, they, the artist did so good with Jean's expressions. Seriously. She's got to have, I'd say she has the best character design in this whole freaking game. Young Jean, they knocked it out of the park with her and her expressions. Don't worry about it. Since you work here, you're definitely a part of this. No. I, uh... I ran away from being a part of this. Oh god, Jean! Jean? I, uh... I'm, uh, not everyone's representative. I'm not a leader. But they ran away from my job of keeping everyone together. Uh, no matter what words I say, they won't reach anyone's heart. Small drops of rain started to appear in the cloudy sky. However, Jean looked up at that sky, her mind racing. Her expression was filled with some kind of regret and resolution. John. Yeah? I'm gonna go home and get ready. And then, let's head the fuck out. Head out where? Around. To a few places. Let's go and take back a fate that I must fulfill. Ooh, ring effects. Oh my god, we haven't seen Rose and Wayne in forever. Wow. Whoa, son, the rain is getting stronger. Let's go back to the car. Wink. Yeah. I think that I really wasn't a woman well suited to being madam. That ain't true. And even if you weren't well suited to it, I think you overcame that handicap after all your experiences as madam. Even so, I think I was an immature madam. With only a few years of experience after gaining that position. Everyone's immature. To put it that way, human life is eternally immature. No. People in a position to lead others must not be immature. Because the cost of immaturity affects the fate of a great many people. Also, they have brought a lot of comrades to their deaths because of my immaturity. Oh, that's Rose. I mean, that's Wayne. God damn it. I also may have brought a lot of comrades to their deaths because of my immaturity. Hey. We aren't allowed to be immature. Madam, should be a person who has those qualifications from the start. Talent, or maybe it's education and environment. Only a person suited for the position of Madam should be allowed to accept that title. That's why my sin is so great. Even though I knew I was immature until the time I was shot and wounded, I let my immaturity run wild. Ended up throwing the fates of so many into chaos. Oh god, Rose just blames herself for everything. Oh god, it's not fair. That's not true. Being wounded by such things was merely that heavy responsibility of being mad. At the very least. Amanda Sutton was more qualified than me. She was a school teacher, and she had a lot of experience teaching and guiding people. 
They are always wonderfully qualified with their charm and resilience. And Stella's clever wisdom made her an excellent candidate, too. I did have the ability to mediate between them. But that doesn't make me qualified to be madam. The madam doesn't have time to waste on caring for people. She needs to have the ability to simply stand at the front and lead people with her back. I was never fit to be madam. But I couldn't quit either. Whether you're qualified or not, you are the madam, Rosan. That's wrong. I should have kept on waiting in order to pass the position on to someone who was truly qualified to be madam. I'm sure of it. Someone who is born with the fate of standing in front of the people, believing in that mission their whole life. I'm sure someone like that will appear soon. Oh god, both Rose and Jean are feeling the same thing. It's really heartbreaking. When I meet that person, I'm sure I'll finally be freed from this sinfulness. Rosa. No, Rose, you gotta stop blaming yourself. None of this is your fault. How many people have had their fates thrown into chaos? Because of an immature woman like me. I'm sure. This proves I don't even have the right to regret all that has happened. Hopefully. When a madam with all the qualifications inherits everything. I want her to make it appear I never existed in the first place. God damn it, Rose! No! God damn it, no! Stop! Fucking hell! I want her to erase that shameful, sinful days where I was an immature madam. Ugh. It's tough. Leading people. I had thought of Madame Rose as a saint who rose up in response to the era. Even if she didn't feel that way at first, I was sure she felt so after becoming Madame. However, I'm sure everyone came to her one sidedly for support, like me. And she was kind hearted and wanted to live up to the expectations of those around her. I'm sure she acted the part of the Madame they all wanted. Even though I'd sworn to offer my whole life to her, I thought I'd understood her better than anyone else. On that day, I realized it was just my conceit. Ah, uh, it's raining outside now. This entire time, she had been worrying and suffering. And not only could I not accept that, I couldn't even support or understand it either. So for the first time, I understood her and prayed. Prayed for the still unseen madam chosen by the heavens to quickly free her. Wanker. If you still think of me as the madam, I have just one order. Yes, Rosa. I have no guard I can trust and relax around more than you. And I know you're a tight lipped person. Who can accept it even when I open my heart to you like this? If you meet a true madam. Yes? Support that person from the bottom of your heart. I'm sure that person will need you. I couldn't help but look up at the sky of cold rain. Covering my face with the droplets. However was surely the greatest praise she could have given me. With hop drops trailing around my face, I answered it. As I looked up at beyond that rainy sky. 
I was sure that she wanted her very existence to be erased. However, that alone couldn't be allowed. I understood it clearly. Someday, people would appear who would understand that she was the true madam and praise her. Until that day, someone would have to remember her great achievements. I thought that surely this was the fate, the mission demanded of me by the heavens that brought me to her. Butler. The captain's totally worn out these days. He's literally the major's pet. It's hardly surprising. He's been confined to this floor for a whole year. God damn. That's horrible. Except when the major brings him outside, he isn't even allowed to lay foot on the stairs. He's always under observation, whether he's eating, using the shower, using the bath. God! I go insane after three days of that. I know the captain knows too much, but why all this? I could just make up some crime to accuse him of and throw him in jail. And that's what makes the Major so creepy. The Major hates the Mafia and people make use of them. He's probably trying to punish the Captain for being in bed with Primavera for so many years. Even the prison has more privacy than this. What a horrible punishment. his freedom stolen for a year and being kept under close observation was treatment on the level of torture. Oh, this is narration now. God damn it. Even some of Gabriel's subordinates are starting to sympathize with this worn out butler. However, while they sympathize, they still had to quietly and mercilessly obey Gabriel's orders. They have to continue blocking all communication between Butler and the outside world. Perhaps they had pity on Butler because they delivered him letters, though only from his family. Of course, they only delivered letters to him. They didn't let him respond. Even so, they believed these letters from the homeland soothed his heart. If only for a short time. Perhaps even those became chains holding Butler down. Because they brought news of his sister, living a life full of happiness, even though his ceremony kept getting delayed for various reasons. God damn it. I knew it! Angie. I won't. I fucking knew it. Of course. They kept Angie's name the same. Let this demon lay a finger on your happiness. God, all we need to know, like, end the story with this, is him to marry a girl from the, con the, the Castiglione family. The entire large fourth floor of the occupying Chris's HQ Western Building was devoted to Gabriel's anti-organized crime department. There were always guards on that floor, preventing anyone who wasn't supposed to be there from entering. Even the Director General couldn't use the toilet there without Gabriel's permission. Hello, James. Welcome to the stream.
Never thought I'd be breaking into here. You can still withdraw now, you know. If I do, something's gonna happen that can never be undone. Do you have the plan lay and layout memorized? Got it memorized? Of course. If you mess up now, there won't be a chance to save you. I know. But this is my... Yuki-chan's revenge. Of course, I hate this Gabriel guy. But I'm less concerned about whether he lives or dies. I'm more concerned about whether things go as he's got planned. I wonder, is Alan gonna fight Gabriel at some point? Dead men tell no tales. At the current moment, we obviously can't let the captain die, but we mustn't kill the Major either. They knew Gabriel was keeping Butler under house arrest. There was no way he was in that situation of his own will. If they could rescue him, he would surely listen to them. Richard would listen to Butler. If he heard the truth of that crime from Butler's mouth, the misunderstanding with the GDS would be resolved. However, in actual fact, it would probably be almost impossible to rescue a man as combined as Butler practically was. This was the headquarters of the occupying forces in City 23. If anyone grew suspicious, it would probably be all over. In this era, MPs would fire without hesitation, even inside an HQ building. But something went wrong. The GDS couldn't afford to have the U.S. military even more against them than they already were. As a result, the direct rescue itself would have to be done by Alan alone. The Chinese man being arrested in occupying forces base was something the GDS had to avoid at all costs. However, Alan was fully aware of all the danger. Even so, he had to do this. Well, I know, but, um... I know, I think he'll be able to at least use guns well. You know, like Leo can. Besides his talent as a sniper, Alan had a normal courage and fighting experience. Nearly everyone in the GDS could only speak Chinese, but Alan could speak Japanese. I don't know why they're not doing it at night either, Luca. That's what I that's exactly what I was thinking. The fact that only he could communicate with Butler, who couldn't speak Chinese, was a huge point. Once he snuck in, he'd be keeping quiet the whole time, so it didn't matter that he didn't speak English. Of course, Meiju had prepared beforehand so that they would be able to back up Alan in various ways. He'd offered all kinds of support, including information and a map of the building. Even if an alarm went up and everything went to hell, as long as Alan could get Butler outside, a means of escape had been set up. Oh, he's got a silencing. Wow. He'd even begin a cutting edge silence pistol used by Chinese military special forces. Of course, he sh if he shot it, he'd be half dead already. In case the worst happened, he'd even be given a suicide pill. Thanks for everything. So it feels like I've become a spy. He's got the silenced PP7 and everything. Only you will sneak into that floor, but we will back you up using all we can muster. Okay. Shaolan will also support you and aid you as much as possible. 
I am. I'll be counting on you, Shorty. Alan, who had already spent many days with the GDS, he full well about the many skills packed into her small body. She would climb on the outer walls and come in Alan's eyes and ears from the outside and providing support. However, it was raining, unfortunately. It would be hard to find footholds. Even she didn't want to die. She would support him as much as possible, but it had been explained to him beforehand that she would be limited. I get it. Even I wouldn't want to have to escape, escape carrying both Shaolan and the captain. She said that's my line. <laughs> Alan didn't know how to read lips and Shaolan didn't speak Japanese. However, they learned a minimum level of hand signals were capable of understanding each other enough that it wouldn't inhibit them during this operation. It's like, then you get the code at call. It's like, Alan, come in. Lulit lolly lule lo. Colonel. Ah, Metal Gear. Ever since the day they had decided to rescue Butler, Butler, <laughs> I knew I was going to do it eventually. The two of them had, to, had worked on this plan and trained together. Car stopped at the entrance to the occupying forces HQ building. The driver set a parking permit and spoke with the MPs. Welcome to Occupying Forces HQ. Do you have an appointment? I have a meeting with the Director General at 1600. Tell him Lee Major was here. I've thought this before, but you're pretty amazing, Aniki. You speak both Japanese and English perfectly? The era where you could just get by just by speaking Japanese is over. Didn't you learn at least a little Chinese after living in China for a fucking year? Only one phrase. It's a greeting. Rebenran. I've never heard of that phrase. That isn't a greeting. It means Japanese person. Yeah, I knew. I know Ren means person in Chinese, so it had to be. <laughs> oh my god. Is that so? Everyone said that when they looked at me, so I was sure it meant hello. Well, oh, fuckleberry hound. <laughs> I'm certain they were quite amused when you greeted them in kind. It was a courtesy call by Lee Meiju, an influential man in small rock Chinatown. Alan had slipped in as one of his guards. With that, they made it into the HQ building. They were all led into a reception room and told to wait. This was where the plan would start. I pray for your good fortune. Yeah. Alan slipped out of the reception room. This is his first time coming here, but the map had been thoroughly beaten into his brain. The first place he headed was a storage room for cleaning equipment very close to where they had been. Okay, you guys, I'm pretty sure this is going to be a really big section. And uh, I'd like to start this next time with this big, uh, this whole big thing where Alan breaks in and tries to rescue Butler. God, this is going to be so exciting, you guys. I really want to, I, I just, I don't know, I really feel like I want to uh, begin the next stream with um, Alan, you know, this whole sneaking mission. I just think that's a really that's gonna be a really great way to, to start the next stream. I have had an absolute blast doing this day. This arc is 
fucking phenomenal. Loving it, loving it, loving it. Seriously. We've got like three different stories going on right here. We have Alan and the GS, we have uh, the, the, the wandering dogs and you know, trying to rescue Rose. And then we have um, freaking, God damn it. And Leo, Leo and Jean. Like, uh, you know, in their whole thing with protecting the shopping district. That's so cool, you guys. This is the best Rose Gun Days has ever been. Awesome. I'm loving it. Alright, you guys. So, until next time, I will say so long, farewell, love, we to say, and good night. You're all the sweetest of hearts. See ya.